Hello, I'm Lauren and this is Improving the World. I'm an international improviser based in Hong Kong and I speak with amazing women of improv all over the world. Today, I speak with Sara Shokal. She is in Ljubljana, Slovenia, and we talk about the politics of improv. They in Slovenia have a national improv league. What? And improv is integrated in the education system. Double what? Super jelly. How does politics fit into it? Hmm, let's chat. I hope you enjoy. I am talking with Sara Shokal from Lub Lu Those extra J's always throw me for a loop. Lubliana, Lubliana. Did I say it right? You are an improviser, teacher of improv, and also lover of nature. A total left turn from that. We are going to talk about the politics of improv. Yes. Yes. Let's start with the fact that you have a national improv league, Impro Liga, in Slovenia, and yep. you, you are a second generation improviser. That's the coolest thing. I don't know if I know anyone else who can claim that yet. Your mother was one of the first people in Slovenia to get it going. Tell me yep. about this scene. It was just a theater group doing regular cabaret shows on Sundays and at one point they went to London to participate in a street theater festival where they encountered improv scenes and shows and they wanted to learn and had a crash course in improv, came back, introduced improv games into their regular classic cabaret show and my mother was like, hey, what's going on? This is improvised. And they asked the actors and actresses to give them a workshop and they did and two days later a first improv match was conducted on the stage in Slovenia. That was 28 years ago. Okay, thank you, London. We appreciate you. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> so cool. The scene is pretty rooted. Shows every week, people who are performing constantly, not just happening kind of on the periphery, but really ingrained. Could I say it's integrated in society? Is that fair to say? Especially in the bigger cities. The two big cities, Ljubljana and Maribor. Ljubljana especially because it's the capital has a very rich improv scene. There's maybe two or three times a year that you can go and see an improv show each day of the week. I think it's quite amazing. There's still much to be done to put it into the periphery and the villages and just to get people to know what improv is. I would say culturally wise, people know what improv is. Also for from different types of art, it's getting more and more recognition, which I'm very glad. How competitive is the scene? And talk to me about the growth for the last 28 years as it's evolved. Yeah, we've gone through the puberty and we're starting to learn more and reaching out more and getting more knowledge. From the beginning, it was much more comedic orientated when there was only Improliga. Later on, smaller Collective Narobo started drifting off and started exploring long-form improv. They were also the first people to go outside the borders of Slovenia and do improv in Europe and in America. Great bunch of people doing very, you would say, artsy-fartsy, but their style is quite close to me. Searching for deeper meaning, trying to put improv on an art map, very political statements for them as well. Junior Theatre Sports League started evolving, so Impro Liga for people in high schools, later on also elementary schools. When the cradle of improv, in a sense, the theatre where they started, started to go under financially wise, we had to go out because because up until that point, most of the improv was done there. Now, there's many more smaller companies, associations doing their own styles of improv. So now it's very rich. As regarding the competitiveness, the problem with the small space is that you share the audience, right? The people who are running the companies or associations are trying to have a knowledge of when the other troops are having shows so we don't have it on the same day. Or if you have it on the same day, try not to have it at the same time. It gives people a chance to either go to both or just to one and choose one. Do you want to talk at all about the quotas, different aspects which got added on as time went on and as the scene grew? Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. At the beginning when Impromiga started, it was a big pool for future household actor and actresses names for journalists that are quite present in Slovenian journalist world. It was a very much of a cultural pool. Comedians were stand-up comics or, you know, directors, dramaturgs. Maybe five years after the start of it, it became very competitive. I'm talking about male competitiveness. 
in the sense of aggressively taking up space, resorting to vulgar humor, thus underestimating audience's intelligence, I would say wrongly. Very gaggy, very quick-minded, going for punchlines, and, you know, just bulldozing over weak people on stage, male or female, but female would be the first to go. And so at one point, there were no girls or women in Impoliga, so they had to introduce a quota, so that each team that applied had to have representation of both genders. And of course, this should be just a crutch, am I right? This is just a sidestep. We want the people to realize, hey, it's nice and good and gives you so much richness if you have a diverse team on stage. We don't have the quotas anymore. You do still have sometimes one gender groups. Mostly not though. I think this year there is not one team applied in Impro Liga that has only one gender represented. In that sense, we did good. But when quotas were introduced, I recall talking to other girls and women. We felt, oh God, you feel a lot of pressure being the only girl on the team. So the quota was you had to just have one woman. Representation of both gender. It could mean having six guys and one girl or vice versa, hmm. which was an option I went for at one point because I said, well, we can play with that quota. But the problem was for some people, they wouldn't understand why this needed to be introduced. There was this sense of women are not funny anyway. Um, yes, uh, you know. Uh, Marilyn, it was nice um, talking to you. I don't think I can do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know it sounds horrible. Uh, you know, not... Mm, yeah. <laughs> there wasn't a space to talk about this stuff. Finding a safe space for men to talk about vulnerabilities is super hard to create and set up. To that point about having these discussions, the quotas were sort of helping to lay a foundation to get us to yeah. where you are now. You mentioned that there is improv in education. So this is something mm -hmm. that people have access to at school. Like they don't have to go do this on Saturday afternoon or give up, you know, like yeah. more time. It's at school. So what does yeah. that look like, having it integrated in the education? Oh, it's great. <laughs> It's still not mandatory. It's an extracurricular activity, but uh, I do hope that one day, and the idea of the project when it started was to have it as an obligatory part of curriculum. And seeing the effects of improv workshops on teenagers is amazing. These workshops come to them at a time when they are very much aware of the differences that physical change is making. They are starting to understand the extensity of status play between genders as kids. They're not thinking of all the layers where this is going or the extensivity affecting life, theirs and of the society. In that sense, I would say it's super important to give them improv also on the matter of the subject, gender roles and relationships. Well, okay, taking that and going to our overall topic, stepping up on stage itself being a political statement. To me, it, it, stepping up on stage is a political statement. As much as a political statement of not wanting to vote is a political statement, whether you acknowledge it or not, for me is because people are listening to me. <laughs> In this sense, even people are paying to listen to me. That bestows on me a certain power. What am I saying? And what am I conveying? I don't know all the people in the audience. Maybe some of them don't like me or don't like my views, but I can come a step closer to them by showing them I'm trying to understand them, playing out things that are in life happening, you know, like, gender-based themes, ecological-based themes. Improv has this amazing power of reflecting whatever is happening at the moment. And we can do a show today. We could do a show now. Any other art form needs months or years to prepare. I'm not saying that they are not as important. They have their own thing, which is mm -hmm. also amazing. More time gives them more playtime. So you recognize this. People are paying to hear you speak and therefore there's a responsibility. Do you think that artists realize this? Getting up on stage, reflecting life, issues and experiences and relationships. Mm. Do you know this? Mm. Yeah, this is my opinion. But all the people that I am teaching or get in contact with, I'm trying to convey this message. It doesn't mean every scene needs to be political. Make a point. I would argue that if people need to be told this and this discussion is taking place, people are not aware. What I've realized from my experiences in talking about this with other improvisers is that people who are doing it professionally, mm -hmm. they are aware of this subject and they also make a decision whether they take it as a part of their career, as a part of their performance, or they don't. 
don't. You know, it's their prerogative. But they are aware. Less experienced improvisers, and especially most of the beginners, I would say they are not aware. God bless them in a sense, you know, because it needs to be fun at the beginning. And having fun on stage is as important as making a political stance. I'm going to ask the question now. We pay actors and sports people lots of money and teachers and certain healthcare professionals yep. who take care of us, who pick up our rubbish, don't get paid anything, and actors do. Mm. We seem to imbue power upon performers. The performer doesn't realize they have power when they get up there because we're having to have this discussion. Mm -hmm. But the audience, do you think that they do? And do you think that they get how much power they're putting onto someone or allowing them? I think I'm talking for improv here. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start at the beginning. A theater is a ritualized space, whether we know it or not. Even when we come to an improv venue, theater happens. It means we are coming to see and watch people on stage and we are reflecting and sympathizing or being emotionally involved with whatever is happening on stage. Mm -hmm. That also means not liking the stuff that's on stage. <laughs> I like better the shows that make me go, oh, what the fuck was that, you know? Uh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, rather than you know, like, oh, I, I might as well not seen that because it was nothing that moved me. You need to be moved, whether it is like, oh, this was great or oh, this was bad. Something moved. It made you have a discussion. It made you think. Made you think. And the audience coming into improv shows, I think they come with this mindset of being entertained, which is okay. Improv provides with instant situational comedy because everything is improvised. You never know what might go wrong. And seeing people on stage struggling when something goes wrong is fun. It's sort of a perverse thing, but audience enjoys seeing people being in a sticky situation on stage because the audience members and us in life come into sticky situations and we want to see people on stage dealing with those sticky situations. Yeah. I think most of the time people on stage don't realize entertainment can hit some very important points, current affairs, political or universal themes of like death, birth, mm -hmm. love. Entertainment doesn't always mean having this cheap laugh. Good entertainment gives you a recognition laugh, you know, something that you will remember for days or weeks to come or even years. Some scenes stay with you for years because you felt something. Gags and one-liners and punchlines might last a week, then they go into oblivion. Because the working memory starts putting other information in, but the emotional memory will remember the emotion that happened the recognition of oh my god yes i think also a lot of performers are afraid that the audience will shy away from coming to the next show if they are too heavy which can be true but i also think cultivating an intelligent audience is an important part of being an improviser yeah. intelligent audience not in the sense of oh they need to read zillions of books or be super informed of today's happening but intelligent in the sense of we're not underestimating. I'm talking about ideal conditions. Not every show can achieve that. Sometimes we're just happy to make it over the hours. Like, fuck, man, I was, you know. And that's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You were making me think of that we all have had these experiences where someone comes up to you who was in an audience and they saw you whenever and they say, oh, I saw you do a show. And, you know, do you remember you were a salt shaker? I have no memory. No memory of it. Yeah. For them, to your point, it has hit home for something. It resonated for something. I feel bad. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. But yeah. it served a different kind of significance for them than it did for me. That is really precious that you're able to help contribute a little piece of something mm. that maybe mm. one tick or think or pause. What about um, the art form versus the, let's say, just comedy? We talked about how people are coming for a little bit of a laugh or a light night. They want to have a beer and hang out and be with friends. Yeah. We are, despite Slovenia being oh, still kind of on the periphery, and there's an argument that takes place in the creepy gray space of performance. Is improv just comedy? Or is it an art form? Is it part of theater? And I don't even know why they have to be separate. What are you hearing and what's the chat there? And what are your thoughts? Speaking from Slovenia point of view <laughs> and how I see it, it's getting better and better. There used to be a lot of, oh, improv. 
whatever, especially the theater academy. Sometimes if they would hear that you were involved in an improv theater group, they would actually put it as your weakness, not as your power. Not against you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, but, but that's because they felt endangered old mm. systems, I guess. But nowadays, it's getting better. More and more kids that are doing improv in high schools are also applying as either actor and actresses or directors, film directors, and so on, to be involved in some part of the process. They're getting in, building bridges. I think we should all learn from each other. I'm super interested to do a show where there's a director, a directress, an actor, an actress, an improviser, a dancer, and a clown. How come we don't you know? say Im- improv We just... Yeah, yeah, I was. I also stopped in my mind like, oh, okay, I'll just go. Yeah, on. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do think it's interesting when I was young, so like five minutes ago, in the acting world, to take away the gender we just said actor for everyone. So men and women were Mm -hmm. all actors. It sort of almost made it easier, but at the same time, I've come to a place now where I try to remove a lot of gender. So I don't refer to the plural as guys. I try to say they all or everybody or whatever. Yeah. We're kind of reintegrating gender sometimes. You you have gender in Slovenian, right? Pronouns and- Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I totally steamrolled you. No, 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 because like even when teaching, it's so important to include both forms. It's such a small difference. It's just language, but where do you start? Yeah, absolutely. So we've said that improv is political and it's important and getting up on stage, no matter what you're saying, you're saying something and they're listening and you're making a statement. So it is an art form. What do you think about just breaking the rules and just being funny? Is that still political? Is that important? What do you think? It's super important. Making a strong political statement or commenting on a political affair going on at the moment or a universal theme is as important as just being happy and having two people having fun on stage. Mm. Having an intimate moment of being silly, breaking all the rules of storytelling, messing them up for the sake of messing them up. It's super important to see that because it just gives us time to process all the other in brackets heavy stuff. It's only heavy because the lightness is missing and lightness comes from being proficient in acting. It's also about the distance of what am I doing on stage versus what am I in real life. And in improv, that's such a hard thing to achieve. Actors have it easy. We should learn the lightness from them to approach to the hard and heavy themes so that they're not as heavy as they can sometimes be. And it's not just these light moments and this laughter doesn't come just to have a pause and for the people to process and for us to process. It's also important in its own self to show two grown people having, you know, just fun in front of the audience, not giving a fuck about the audience in a sense of, no, this is just us having fun. And almost forgetting that they are watched. We see this intimate moment of people, their inner child playing with each other, which means a super important moment and vulnerability conveying to the audience. Don't forget to play, to laugh, to open up to people, to be vulnerable. Don't close up. Don't lose your imagination. Don't lose hope. I mean, it's so important. Okay, point made. (laughs) (laughs) You could speak to the younger version of you or the improv community or someone who's never tried improv and and they find this video and they're just pondering themselves and watching us talk away. What do you want to say? What are your words of wisdom? Oh man. <laughs> With great power comes great responsibility, as Uncle Ben said. You're the second person to say that to me. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, I said I said that to myself before trying to say something wise, and I also realized while saying it, I'm also saying something wise, but it's not mine, in fact. Uh, what would I say? Um, say that. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't make it any less. Love- maybe it's more wise because more than one person has done it. Yeah. Uh, love more. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Love more. Beautiful. Last but not least, if people want to find you, if they're going to be in Slovenia. If you're coming to Slovenia, to Ljubljana, the capital, look me up. There are shows in English that are performed by a company named Iglu. Once a month, you can always join a rehearsal. We have rehearsals galore, so don't worry about that. Nice. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate your time and your energy. It was great speaking with you. Thank you. This is Improv in the World. I'm Lauren, and there's more where that came from. Thanks very much. Bye, all. 
so did you love the video if you did please say kind and wonderful things in the comments down below and if you are feeling sassy you could subscribe and look for more in carving the world thanks bye